Okay, good morning. So uh, today we talk about these exponential functions. This is the last part of this chapter. Then you can prepare yourself for the exam for this chapter. Uh, so let me just define what do I mean by an exponential function. Uh, if you have a function f of x, which is equal to a constant, which I call it c, multiplied by a to power x. So c is a constant, a is also a constant, but we have some limitations for this constant. The limitations are that a should be positive and a should not be equal to 1. Yes? This is called an exponential function. The reason that we exclude 1, because if a is 1, then 1 to power x is just 1. And then when you multiply it by a constant, it becomes a constant. Then it means that you are facing a constant function, which is not that interesting. We already know everything we need to know about constant functions. And the reason that I limit myself to actually uh, positive a's, because if a is negative, then some x's, for some x's, a negative number to that power is not defined. For example, if I say that a is negative 2, then I am not allowed, for example, to choose x equals to 1 half. Because if I choose x equals to 1 half, then it becomes minus 2 to the power of 1 half. But this means the square root of minus 2, which is not defined in the realm of real numbers. But that's why uh, we restrict ourselves to positive a's and a's not equal to 1. When I restrict myself to positive a's, so this is not acceptable in the uh, real numbers, when I restrict myself to positive a's, I am guaranteeing that the domain of this function is the set of all real numbers. Okay, so since a is positive, every value, every real x every real number x is acceptable. So the consequence of this assumption is that the domain of my function, you remember what was the domain of a function? The domain of function is the set of all real numbers. So the domain means the numbers that I can uh, use as the input for my function. So this is a function that takes a real value from you and gives you a number back. Yes, it gives you a real number back. So when I assume that A is positive, it means that I am guaranteeing that the domain of this function is the set of all real numbers. Yes, so that is the definition of, a, uh, of, of an exponential function. For example, if I want to give you an idea, so you can... Probably the simplest possible exponential function is to choose, so just write 2 to power x. This is an exponential function, yes? If I ask you what is c in this case, you would say that c is what? c is 1, and what is a? a is 2. Yeah? So this is just a, an exponential function. Probably the simplest possible exponential function is this one, 2 to some power x. Okay, so let me just try to give you some examples. Uh, so, for, I want you to find C, and so I give you example here. Uh, I write some functions here, of course they are very simple, but I want you to tell me what is C, what is playing the role of C, and what is playing the role of A in the function that I am writing. For example, let me write f of x to be 5 times 3 to power x. Yeah, it's very clear. That's an exponential function. What is playing the role of the capital C there? <coughs> C in this case is 5, and what is A? It's 3. That's excellent. That's an exponential function. Or <coughs> f of x equals to 3 times 0 0.5 to power x. 
So that's also an exponential function. But this time c is how much is 3 and a is 0 0.5. Yes? Uh, for example, what, I, what about this one? f of x is equal to minus 2 times the square root of 5 to the power of x. That's also an exponential function. So in this case, c is minus 2, and then a is square root of 5. Yes? Or I don't know, for example, what do you think about this? f of x is equal to 4 times 5 to the power of 2x. Okay, so what is c in this case? Uh, c is 4, but if I ask you about a, if you just say 5, I'm not saying it is wrong, but according to the definition in the book, when you have an exponential function, you expect to have x exactly here. Yes? 5 to power 2. 5 to the power 2. So the first thing that you have to do is to write 4 times, instead of 5 to the power of 2x, you write 5 to the power of 2 to the power of x. Why is that? Because I want to make it x. I want to make x alone in the exponent. So then it becomes 4 times 25 to the power of x. So if I ask you what is c, you will say that c is 4, and what is a? a what is a? a is 25. If I want to make everything according to the definition given in the book. Or, for example, let me give you another one. Uh, f of x is equal to uh, 6 times 3 over 4 to the power of x. That's also easy, yes. So what is c? c is 6, and what is a? 3 over 4. And then you see that every a that I have used, I have uh, respected these two conditions. a is positive, a is not equal to 1. And then the last one, what do you think about this? f of x is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of minus x. So what is c? c is 2, but what is a? Yes? 1 over 3. 1 over 3, because I have to make x alone, so what I do, I would write it as 2 times, I would write it as 3 to the power of minus 1 to the power of x, because my goal is to make x alone, x is not alone here, it contains a negative sign, so I have to remove that, but 3 to the power of minus 1 is 1 third, and then I have to power x. So now if I compare it, then I realize that c is 2, and then a is 1 third. Okay, so that's not a very big thing if you, if you have a function of this. But it is important to realize that there is a big difference between this function, which is called exponential function, and this function, for example, g of x equals to capital C, x to power a. Yes? So you see the difference here. Here, a is a constant number given to you, x is your variable, but the variable appears in the exponent. But here, x, which is your variable, appears in the base, the constant number appears in the exponent. So that's a different name. This is called the power function. So, yeah, make sure that you understand the difference. So when you say exponential function, you expect that your base is a constant number and you have your variable in the exponent. Okay, so that is the meaning of an exponential function. Any questions? Yes? So we're, so we're not allowed to add anything to an, like, or we won't, we're, not, we're not allowed to have an addition in an exponential function. No, that is not a pure exponential function, yes. Okay. So you can add, of course, everything. So, for example, you can talk about this function, f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 5. Yeah. But if I'm just respecting the definition in the book, they consider this as a definition okay. of an exponential function. Okay. Um, by the way, sometimes people call this c initial value. And the reason is that 
because many problems related to exponential functions are for the functions in which x is time. Yes, for example, you can write a function f of t. t is a better name when your variable is time. Yes, in mathematics, we don't, we don't differentiate that much uh, between the variables. We always use the, the independent variable to be x and the output to be y. This is why we always draw x and y coordinate systems. Yes, but for example, in physics, uh, for example, if you have a moving particle, at different instance of instance of time, you have a different location for your moving particle. Then it completely makes sense to ask at which location is my particle at that particular time. Or in that case, the variable x will be played by time, and then the variable y will be the location or the distance traveled, let us make it with d. Then you have these two quantities, yes? So this is why uh, sometimes this is called initial value, because if my variable is time and my function is still an exponential function, if I ask you to calculate f of zero, what is your answer? This becomes c times a to power zero. But because a is positive and not equal to one, of course, a to the power of zero is one, and then it becomes c. So you see this quantity that appears here can be assumed as the initial value, the value of the function when time is zero. That is called initial value. So sometimes we call it initial value, yeah, but it's not very good to call it initial value here, because even we don't know what x is. But if x is time, then it makes sense to talk about initial value. Yes, it means the value at the present time. Okay. And the first thing that I, the one thing that I want you to know, even though I have written a lot of exponential functions, you can categorize them in uh, uh, under two categories. One type of exponential function, for the time being, by the way, in the book they have emphasized that C should be positive. In most examples that I presented here for you, C is positive except for this one. But this is not a half two, okay? I will talk about that one as well. But for the time being, let us consider the definition in your book and let us consider that C is positive for the time being, yes. Okay, so I will start with the exponential function f of x, c times a to power x. Of course, a is, as usual, positive and not equal to 1. And then c, and let, me, let us assume that c is also positive in this case. But when you say that a is positive and not equal to 1, let us assume that this is the real line. Here is 0, for example, and here is 1. A should be positive and not equal to 1. So it means that, let me exclude this. A cannot be equal to 1. So I exclude that point. So A can be everywhere on the right-hand side of 0 except 1. So it means that I can consider two scenarios. One scenario is that A is strictly between 0 and 1. It's here. But or... A is larger than 1. So these are the two cases. So when I say A is positive and not equal to 1, an equivalent way to express that is that A is either strictly lies between 0 and 1 or is strictly greater than 1. That's the same thing. And then it happens that for these two cases, the behavior of the function is different. I want to discover that. To discover that, let us consider the simplest scenario. So let me take c to be 1, a to be 2, in one case, number 1. And number 2, let me take c to be 1 again, but this time let me take a to be 1 half. So you see, in this case, I am choosing a here after 1. In this case, I am choosing a to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And let us see what is the difference between the behavior of an exponential function here and there. So in this case, my exponential function, let me call it f of x, is 2 to power x. 
But this time, let me call this exponential function to differentiate the name. Let me start the name with g, and then it becomes 1 half to the power of x. Okay? So let us draw the graph of these two functions to see what is the difference in the behavior of these two functions. So that is one of the points that you have to know. Okay? So if I want to uh, draw the graph of the first function, uh, what I do, I will actually set up a table. We want to sketch, we want to get some idea about how the graph looks like. So uh, let me just put, for example, 0 here. If I put 0 here, 2 to power 0 becomes 1. Let me put 1, for example, for x. Then 2 to power 1 becomes 2, yes? And then, for example, let me increase it. If I put 2, what will be the answer? 4. Four. And if I put 3, it becomes 8. And it increases rapidly. That is called exponential growth. So if some quantity grows exponentially, it means that it becomes very large, very fast. That's one thing that you need to know. And of course, you need to continue. By the way, the reason that I jumped from 0 to 1 is because my calculation of ability is limited. Yes, in principle, between 0 and 1, there are infinitely many no more numbers that I have to consider, but that would be hard, so I skip that, okay? And of course, we can use GeoGebra to have a better graph of the function. And let me also consider negative values, because I told you that the domain of the exponential functions, if you respect these two conditions, is R. So I can put any number there if I want to. So let me also choose some representative for negative numbers as well, okay? So I put minus 1, what happens? 2 to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over 2, yes? And if I put minus 2, it becomes 2 to the power minus 2, which is 1 over 4, and I also continue in that way. Okay, so let us see what happens. If I want to sketch something about the graph of this function, uh, if x is 0, okay, so if you don't mind, I have to increase it a little bit on the y direction, so... Yeah, we don't need the negative y axis. Okay, so here, if I put 0 for x, the y value is 1. So let us consider that this is 1. And if I put 1, it becomes 2. And if I put 2, it suddenly becomes 4. And if I put 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8, somewhere here, for example. And then if I go to the negative values, if I put minus 1, it becomes 1 half. So minus 1 is here, 1 half is here. This is another point. If I make it 2, minus 2, it becomes 1 quarter. Yes, so it becomes 1 quarter here. And if I go here, I hope that you agree with me, the height becomes smaller and smaller. So in principle, if I want to have a feeling about this, if I consider every point in the middle, what you will expect is something like that, which goes higher and higher very fast. But on the other hand, what happens, the height becomes smaller and smaller. For example, if I put minus 3, what would be the number? It would be 1 over 8. So it becomes smaller. So this will continue. But do you think that I will ever reach to the x-axis? No. 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 Because this two, 2 to the power of x, even if I choose x to be, for example, minus 1,000, then it becomes 2 to the power of minus 1,000, which becomes 2 to the power of 1,000. It's extremely, extremely small, but it's still positive. Yes, so it means that I get closer and closer to the x-axis, but I will never ever touch the x-axis. This kind of behavior, I just want you to just know the word. Then we say that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote for your function. It means that in the infinity, they try, to, they, they actually reach together in, in, at infinity, yes? But that is the graph of your function f of x. So y is equal to f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. So that is the behavior of this function. 
So you see, let me just immediately ask your opinion about this. You see, here I have assumed that C is positive, and I have chosen C to be 1. Can you predict what will happen if I have chosen C equals to minus 1, for example? What do you think ha will happen for the graph of the function? So it means that I am asking you to answer this question. What will happen if I have chosen C to be a negative value? In this case, let me choose it. C to be negative 1. So negative 1 times 2 to power x. So if I ask you to draw the graph of that one, of course you can start from scratch again. But what will happen here? Can you tell me? The other way. So, so you see, the x values remain the same. But whenever I calculate y value, for this function the y value is 1. But if I want to calculate the y value for the same x, it becomes minus 1. Yes? So instead of having here, I will have the point here. Is that clear? So this means that every, every point that I have here will be flipped with respect to the x-axis. So instead of having the graph like this, I will have the graph like that. Yes? That's understandable. But let us just consider again what happens for positive. But now, if I do the same thing, but for this function, and I want to draw it on the same coordinate system, and, but I will draw it with a different color so that you can appreciate the difference, okay? So what happens if I want to set up a table for this one? Can you tell me how does this look like? So here, I will take x and y. Let me take the same numbers dot, 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 minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. But let us see what happens now. Of course, I can continue, yes? If I put 0, what happens? 1 over 2 to power 0 is still 1, the same value for 0, yes? But can you tell me what happens if I put x equals to 1? This becomes 1 half this time, yes? And if I put 2, it becomes a quarter, yes? And if I put 3, it becomes 1 over 8. And if I put minus 1 this time, can you tell me what happens now? It becomes 2. So for minus 1, it becomes 2. For minus 2, it becomes 4. And for minus 3, it becomes 8. So if, yeah, let us just skip that. So what happens now? Let me just find these points and try to draw them with a different color. 0, 1 is a still this point. But let me go to the right hand side. When I put 1, I get 1 half. So when x is 1, I get 1 half, which is here. And then when x is 2, I get 1 quarter, yes? And of course, 3, 1, even less than that. When I get minus 1, when I have minus 1, it becomes 2. And when I put, for example, 2, it becomes uh, 4. And then I think you can predict if I put minus 3, what will happen? It becomes 8. And of course, then what you have, you have only these points. So now what is happening is that it's actually going in that direction. And for the same reason, you will never ever touch the x-axis, but you get closer and closer to the x-axis when you go to the right-hand side. But in this case, you are getting closer and closer to the x-axis when you are going to the left-hand side. And at least you can see the difference between the graphs. So these two types of exponential functions, I want you to know it. This one is an increasing function. I want you to know these words, yes? Uh, increasing. And decreasing. But this function is decreasing. Of course, this is conventional. Because if this function is increasing when I go to the right, it is clear that it is decreasing when I go to the left. But that's a convention. When I say a function is decreasing, I, by convention, I always move to the right and see what happens with my function, yes? So when I say my function is increasing, conventionally, it means that when I go to the right, the height of the graph becomes bigger and bigger. And when I go to the left, uh, it becomes smaller and smaller, of course. But remember, the word increasing means that you move to the right and see what happens. The word decreasing, again, the same. You move to the right, yes?
In other words, uh, if you want to express a increasing better, it means that if you give me two values, x1 and x2, so that x1 is smaller than x2, and if I calculate f of x1 and f of x2, if my function is increasing, means that f of x1 is also smaller than f, than f of x2. Yes, what does it mean? So you see the blue one, this is number, this one is 1, this number is 2. Clearly 1 is smaller than 2. But if I look at the height of the increasing function, the height at 1 is this height. The height at 2 is higher. So you see, when 1 is a smaller than 2, the height corresponding to 1 is also smaller than the height corresponding to 2. Yes? So this means that if you choose a number smaller than another number, and if you calculate the increasing function at the smaller number, it remains smaller than if you calculate, calculate the function at the higher number. That is the meaning of the increasing function. This is the mathematical way of saying that when I go to the right, the height goes higher. Yes, that means the function is increasing. But what happens in the decreasing scenario? What happens? This time, when I go to the right, the height becomes smaller and smaller. So this means that if x1 is a smaller than x2, how, they, how can you compare f of x1 with f of x2 in the case of a decreasing function? What happens this time? If your value is a smaller than this value, what happens for f of x1 and f of x2? How they are compared? Yes? Greater than f of x2, yes. So this means that this is a mathematical way of defining a decreasing function. Okay, let me ask you your opinion to see that if you understood what's going on. Do you remember I told you that I consider C to be positive? Let us momentarily forget about this assumption and let us ask you about this. We talked about minus 2 to power x. Yes? So this function was what I told you. I didn't draw it, but I hope that I could convince you that if you draw this one, the graph will be like this. Yes? Now I ask you, what do you think? Do you think the graph is increasing or this function is increasing or decreasing? Always look when you, what happens when you go to the right. So when you are here, the height is this much. Yes? When you go to the right, for example, the height becomes this. When you continue to go to the right, the height becomes this. So what's happening to the height? Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, yes, because it becomes more negative. Yes? So here, this one, if I ask you this value, not this length, of course this length is longer than this length, that's clear. But this is in the opposite direction. This one, for example, is a small negative value. This one is a bigger negative value. So the value has decreased. Yes? So this means that this function is decreasing. And that's also clear, because if I increase x, 2 to power x increases, but when I multiply it by a negative sign, it decreases. So that's also another way to look at the same problem. So is that clear, what's happening? So then this means that I want you to appreciate this difference. This is important. But we have two types of exponential functions. If a is larger than 1, the function is increasing if a that you have chosen is somewhere between 0 and 1 the function is decreasing and then this is the two types of exponential functions that you have for example uh, of course I, I just gave you an example but that is you need it, this is the so you can convince yourself about it so for example if I ask you what is what type of exponential function is this one is it an exp uh, increasing exponential function or decreasing? You don't care about C. As, as far as C is positive, you don't need to be worried about C. You only care about the A value. Okay, tell me, this function, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing, because the A 
is 3, and 3 is larger than 1. But what about the second one? Is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. It's decreasing because the value of a is 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 is between 0 and 1. So this, this is you need to know. By looking at the function, you need to understand the behavior of the function. Is that clear? Okay. Now, uh, let me try to solve some problems, okay? The first problem, let me just give you an abstract problem in the realm of mathematics, not the applications, okay? example that you need to know very well is this one. Uh, determine an exponential function uh, an exponential function call it f such that okay let me such that number one f of zero is two hundred and f of two f of twenty is four hundred so number two f of uh, let me write 10 is 15 and f of 100 is 5 okay, before doing the calculations I want to ask your opinion you are supposed to find an exponential function, the number one with these two properties. What do you predict about the a value for this exponential function? Is it between 0 and 1, or is it larger than 1? Yes? How did you understand that? Because you see that when I increase 0 to 20, the value are also increased. This means that this is a, an increasing type of exponential function. Look at the other one. What do you predict for a in this case? Larger than 1 or smaller than 1 between 0 and 1? You see, I have increased the value from one, 10 to 100. But if that's everything is working fine, the value has decreased. This means that if this is supposed to be an exponential function, it should be a decreasing exponential function. The first one should be an increasing exponential function. Yes? But let us now calculate in details. Okay, so the solution to both of them are more or less the same, but might be technically a little bit different. So what we do, number one, I would say that let f of x be a, an exponential function. I don't know what it is what it is, I would write c a to power x. What I am supposed to find, I am supposed to find c, I am supposed to find, I am supposed to find c, I am supposed to find a. And this is why they have provided us with two pieces of information. Because I have two unknowns, to be able to calculate, to determine two unknowns in principle, I should have two pieces of information. Okay, the first thing is very simple. What does it mean? It means that when you replace x with 0, the answer is 200. Okay, so let's do that. This means that I replace x with 0, so this becomes c a to power 0 is 200. But immediately I realize a to power 0 is 1, so actually I was able to immediately find that the first question mark. The first question mark is 200. And now I have another scenario, I have another uh, uh, 
uh, equality. So I have this equals to 400. What does it mean? It means that if I go to the function, replace the input with 20, the output is supposed to be 400. So this means that I go here, I replace x with 2, 20, and the answer is supposed to be 400. But I already found c, so I can replace c here. Then it means that 200 a to the power of 20 is 400. But I'm looking for a. What should I do? I divide by 200 because my goal is to make a loan, a alone. Yeah? So I divide by 200. So this becomes a to the power of 20 is equal to 2. Yes? Okay, now tell me what is a? What type of equation is this? Can I consider... Why this is an equation? Because I have equality and something not known to me. I want to find it. That's an equation. But what type of equation is that? Is it exponential equation or a power equation? Yes? It's a power equation. Because exponential equation is an equation in which the exponent is unknown. But here the base is unknown. So it has nothing to do with logarithms. Even though this is in the chapter of logarithm, uh, because of the title of exponential functions, but solving this is a math 1c problem, actually. So you want to find a. Okay, can you tell me what should I do? I want to make a alone. a appears in the base. So what is a? Can you tell me? So, so yeah, let me write it on top here. So I have this equation. And I want to find A. So what is A? Anyone? Yes? 20, 20th root, not square. Yes? 20th root. So this becomes 20th root of 2. Yes? And plus or minus you shouldn't forget. Why? Because 20 is E. But in the case, so this is the way that you have to do it, but you do not accept negative 1, so ne 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 the negative 1, why? Because by definition, you know that an exponential function, a, in an exponential function, A should be positive. So you write this, and you say that the negative 1 is not acceptable. So what does it mean? It means that I found A. So A is 20th root of 2. But the answer, you have to write the answer. What is the answer? What is the answer? F of x is equal to C times A to power x. I got C to be 200 multiplied by A, which is this weird number, whatever it is, to the power of x. This is what you have to provide as your answer. Do you remember you predicted that this is an increasing type exponential function? Do, does this calculation also confirm that? So you need to have a, an estimate about the 20th root of 2. It's clear it's larger than 1. Yes. Because if I have a number is smaller than 1, when I raise it to power 20, it cannot reach to 2. It becomes even a smaller. Yes? For example, 0 0.5 is a number between 0 and 1. When I increase it to, when I raise it to higher powers, instead of it making it bigger, it becomes smaller. If 0 0.5 to power 2, it becomes 0 0.25. 0 0.5 to power 3, it becomes 0 0.125. Yes? So it becomes smaller and smaller. So the prediction we made was co quite correct. Yes, that's an increasing exponential function. Uh, okay, let us now do the other one. That is more or less the same problem, but might be a little bit different, a little bit more technical. Because working with zero is easy, but working with ten might be hard. But so number two, I will do the same thing, yes? So if I want to do number two, what I do, I would say that f of ten so the first thing that I need to write, I would say that let f of x to be this, and c and a are unknown. 
But f of 10 is 15 means what? It means that when I replace the input x with 10, the answer is supposed to be 15. So this means that c a to power 10 is 15. But this was not that easy. In this case, this number was 0. And then you immediately drop that one because a to power 0 is 1. And then you immediately got c. But here we cannot do that because the power is 10, not 0. So we have to keep it. Okay, and then I have another piece of information provided for me. So that is f of 100 is equal to 5. So what does this mean? This means that if I replace x with 100, the output is supposed to be 5. So this means that I have to solve a real system of equations. That was also a system of equations, but it was simple. But then it means that I have to set up a system of two equations, one this and the other one that, and two unknowns, one C and one A, yes? And now I ask your opinion about how to solve this. You need to find two numbers, C and A, so that they satisfy these two equations simultaneously. And that is not a standard system, yes? The system that you had the exam for it was just a normal addition. So this is a power system, yes? So how should I solve the problem? Yes? I have a question. <coughs> Make C alone and replace it with the other C. Exactly. That is the general strategy to tackle the problem. That's the method, method of elimination or substitution. I told you that this is the most uh, uh, general strategy to tackle any kind of systems of equations. But in that case, I want to teach you a little bit simpler way. What you said is correct, but my goal is to get rid of one of these variables, yes, so that I have one equation in one unknown. There, there is a simpler way to do it. You just divide them side by side. Yes. What happens? Of course, what Ali mentioned is completely correct. That's exactly the same thing. But let us just divide these things case by case. I divide this one with higher power by that one with lower power. So if this number is 5 and if this number is supposed to be 15, so it is clear that when I divide this by that, it becomes 5 over 15. Agree? Yes? But the point is that I reached, the, I reached my goal, yes? My goal was to eliminate one of these variables, but now this c and that c are cancelled. And then what happens, it becomes a to power what? 100 divided by a to power 10 becomes a to power? 90. And 5, that one can be simplified to one third. So then I can find A again. So that becomes the 90th power of this number, yes? So this becomes A is equal to plus or minus 90th power of 1 over 3. Yes? But then, of course, you can write it a little bit better because the 90th power of 1 is just 1. So I just write, write it like this. The 90th power of 3. But A is not accept. The negative answer is not acceptable because I'm working with exponential functions. In exponential functions, A cannot be negative. So A should be positive. This means that my A is this number. So your prediction was right. The 90th power of 3 is what is bigger than 1. So if I divide 1 by a number bigger than 1, it becomes a number between 0 and 1. Is it, is it bigger than 1 or smaller? No, 90th power of 3 is bigger than 1. Because 3 itself is... So it doesn't matter how many times. So, so I, my claim is that 90th power of 3 is a smaller than 1. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's greater than 1. Why is that? Because this is equivalent. Let us raise it to power 90. So this becomes 3, and this is greater than 1. Now, this is true, yes? So you see 3 is larger than 1. is equivalent to saying this. Because this is true, this should also be true. Yes? 
Okay, so your prediction is correct, but again, this calculation is not what you want to write. You have to write your answer. So the answer in this case is f of x e. Oh, by the way, sorry, sorry. The problem is not finished yet. Why? Because I just got a. I have to also find c. Yes? The problem is not finished. So how can I find C? I will take that A that I found and put it in one of these equations. I would prefer to put it here, it's simpler, yes? So I put it there. C is still unknown, but A is known. What is the value? Is the 90th root of 3 instead of A. And then I raise it to power 10, yes? The answer, according to this, should be 15. Then, of course, you need to make C a law. That's also simple, isn't it? So what is C? You shouldn't let these nasty numbers distract you, yes? So this is a number at the end. For example, if instead of this one, if you have 10 C equals to 15, immediately you can find C by dividing 15 by 10. But instead of 10, you have a little bit of strange number, but that's a number. So you have to divide 15 by that, yes? Okay, but if I want to do a little bit simpler, I want to raise this number to power 10, but 1 to power 10 is just 1, and then I have to raise this 1 to power 10. Is equal to 15. So let us go to a scratch. You don't know to go. You can just write it on the side. Yes. Can you tell me what can I do with this one? Can I simplify it a little bit? Yes. I believe that we can divide ninety by ten. Something like that. Yes. Because this means three to the power of one over ninety. But then I want to raise it to power 10. I can multiply the exponents. It becomes 10 over 90. But 10 over 90 has a better name. It's 1 over 9. And then I can write it in the third form by writing the ninth root of 3. Yes? So this is nothing except the ninth root of 3. So these are technical problems, yes? This becomes the ninth root of 3 is equal to 15. I want to make C alone, so I have to multiply by this number, okay? This means that C is equal to 15 multiplied by the ninth root of 3. Yes? So just see that this problem is the same problem. It's a little bit harder because the numbers are a little bit harder. But then you have to write your answer finally, yes? So what you write, you write f of x equals to c multiplied by a to power x. A very strange exponential function, but that's an exponential function. To divide? Yeah, because C multiplied by one. No, I can divide by the whole expression. But this means multiply this by that. Instead of dividing, I multiplied everything by this guy. When I multiply the left hand side by this, that number will cancel this one. One is left. One times C is C. But then I have to also multiply that. So it doesn't matter. If you divide, you have to divide in this way. If you multiply, you have to multiply in this way. But the answer at the end will be the same. Yes? Okay, so that's an exponential uh, uh, function. I need uh, tomorrow probably as well to finalize this lesson. Uh, because now this is some problems in the realm of mathematics itself. But... We need to also understand a little bit about the applications of these exponential functions in practice. Okay? We will do that tomorrow. Any questions?
Yeah, so this lesson is not complete yet, so I will not write something on the... So I will write, probably you can read the text. I will do it tomorrow, okay? I will continue tomorrow. Any questions? Thank you very much.